hail favored one friends praise the lord good morning and welcome to the sunrise with jesus today we're going to look at what it takes to win the favor of god to remain in the favor of god and to grow in the favor of god God favors some over the others. Well, it's highly unlikely because six times in the Bible, the Word of God assures us that with God there is no partiality. So, how do we understand the favor of God? When we look at the Gospel of Saint Luke, he introduces Mother Mary, her whole entry into the history of salvation by giving us a very elaborate description of the visitation of the angel Gabriel to her and how does the angel Gabriel greet her he says hail favored one and we know that till now mother mary has not done anything to win the favor of god Now in certain other versions of the Bible the same words have been translated as this hail favored one has been translated as hail full of grace so we understand that to be favored by god the favor of god is also about being graced by god receiving the grace of god So does God give grace only to some definitely law not we look in the gospel of John chapter 1 the word of god says that from his fullness we all have received we all have received grace upon grace god is so full of grace he's so full of generosity he's so full of love that his favor his love and his grace just keeps pouring out upon every one of us so what really matters is that we learn how to be open to the graces how to remain in the grace and how to grow to that fullness of grace that god invites each one of us and the best person who teaches us what it takes for us as humans to be open and to abound in this grace is mother mary herself so today we're going to look at five aspects that she reveals to us about growing in grace and the first is this though we always look at these beautiful picturizations of mother mary with a golden crown with beautiful wreaths One thing we see in scripture is Mother Mary never strived for any earthly crown. For that matter, she did not strive for heavenly queenship. There was only one thing that she strove for. One thing that she worked on. The one thing she was focused about and that was about being the servant of God. She says behold I am the handmaid of God. Friends, it is not about being the best. There are some of us who carry worldly goals into our spiritual life and we want to be the holiest among those around us. We want to have more gifts. We keep talking about occupying great places in heaven. about being on the right side and the left side of god if we could get that opportunity but mother mary shows us first and foremost what you and i must be striving for is about favoring god not merely about receiving favors not merely about receiving crowns but about enthroning god and being a servant of god that was her focus the second aspect that we learn about grace from mother mary is that she did not calculate 
what she did for God, but she was very keenly vigilant and aware of God, what God had done for her. She would sing out, the mighty one has done great things for me. When God is great, he only does great things for every one of us. She did not sit and calculate and say, how many great things I have done for God. I have given the best years of my life for God. I set aside my plans for God. I spent so much for God. She was not at all looking at those calculations because she was focused on what God had done for her. Friends, this awareness of what God has done, this keen sense of gratitude is in fact at the heart of servanthood. It is at the heart of everyone who belongs to God and everyone who therefore is open to the grace of God. Now, when we look at gratitude, we also realize that the opposite of gratitude is not merely ingratitude, but it is about taking things for granted. And here is where we see Mother Mary had such a keen and a clear awareness that everything is grace. The third lesson we learned from Mother Mary was that she was, as she was grateful, she was keenly aware, completely aware that all is grace. She never had a sense of entitlement. She never thought, oh, this is what I deserve. She knew very well, God does not need us. God does not need you and me to do his great miracles, but God in his extraordinary love for us, in his extraordinary desire to work with us, in his extraordinary graciousness has called us to be. And here is where we see Mother Mary would say her one qualification was her lowliness. She says, the Almighty God has looked upon the lowliness of his handmaid. Friends, today when you and I look at ourselves, can we ever qualify for the favor of God? Can we earn or even win the favor of God? Never. The favor of God is so connected to his compassion. And it is precisely because we are such small people, we are such weak and fragile people, that God in his compassion clothes us with grace. Mother Mary was not only aware of the favor of God, she was not only aware of his compassion, his love, his goodness, she was confident of God. Sometimes we could be boasting of the many things that we have done or even what God has done, but the moment a little, a little problem happens in our life, the moment things don't work out in our life, we could begin to doubt God's love. And here is where we see Mother Mary was confident that God is good. And this confidence is translated by persistence in faith. And we see this beautifully in Cana, the first miracle that Jesus would perform. Mother Mary presents this problem situation to Jesus. They have no wine. And what she meets with is an apparent rejection. Jesus says, this is not my hour and this is not our concern. But Mother Mary does not act arrogant. She is not presumptuous, but she is perseverant. She turns to the servants and says, do whatever he tells you. She does not give up. She does not say, oh, Jesus has rejected what I said. And at the same time, she is not presumptuous saying, yes, he will tell you how to get the wine. She says, do whatever he tells you. She gave God the space to be God. She would say, do whatever he tells you. He may tell you, well, announce that the wine is over. He may tell you, order some more wine. She did not presume anything. All that she would ask them to is to be 
focused, to be vigilant on the words of Jesus. Finally, we see in Mother Mary, not only was she perseverant in faith, she also was perseverant in her mission. Her service was for God was not like a job, a title, a profession, a position. It was a mission. And her mission, as it seemed obvious in the announcement of the angel, was that you will bring into the world the Son of God. But her mission did not end with bringing Jesus into this world. Her mission did not even end with him entering adulthood. Her mission did not end at Calvary. She waited on in Calvary. She would receive the disciple, the entire church, and now she would continue her mission as the mother of the church, and she continues to this day to be our mother. Friends, when we have that sense of gratitude. Isn't it interesting? The word gratitude is so close to the word grace. When we are all grateful, keenly aware that everything we have is simply the grace and the goodness of God, that gratitude opens our hearts to be growing to the fullness of grace because all that God wants to offer us is nothing less than the fullness of grace. So let us keep our eyes on the way Mother Mary looked. She remains the mother of the church, not because the people welcomed her, not because there was a popularity poll, but simply because she knew that God has done great things for her. Friends, the sense of thankfulness. The sense of thankfulness saves us from all presumptuousness and it opens our hearts to the mighty things that God wants to do and is doing for us today. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you, for you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you. You deserve the glory and the honor, Lord we your hands in worship as we, we lift, lift our hands in worship and the honor. we open our hearts Lord, we lift our hands to in take in his love as we, lift your holy name. we wait for his glory to be manifested the glory that was manifested on Mount Sinai on Mount Tabor Mount Carmel, here. It is the Lord Himself who is come to us in the form of bread. We want to look at Him. We want to believe in Him. We want to offer our lives to Him. With Mother Mary, the fiat here I am, your handmaid, let it be done to me according to your word. Life with the Lord is more blessed than all the pleasures and gains of this world. Mother Mary, here we stand with you before your son, 
the son you took in your hands the son you held by the hand the son with whom you lived the son you held beneath the cross in your arms your son but the mary we stand with you looking at the face of your son to surrender to begin a journey of faith in this uncertain world this valley of tears storms and waves rising all on a sudden nothing looks certain but mary we want to look at your face and learn to live you will take us to your son telling us do what he tells you to and mary we are willing we are ready we want to say that fear with you to jesus lord we worship you as an oblation we want to bring to you today our whole life our future this life journey to be protected by you o oh god lord we worship you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there's no one else like you there is no one else like you there's no love you like you there's no certainty so like you there is no, there's no glory like, like you. you there's no protection there like you no there's no future like what you can give us so jesus we praise no you like we worship you we adore you jesus no you are the lord you are the master like you are our god we prostrate ourselves at your feet we give our life to you oh god for your will be to be done in our lives praise you lord jesus thank you hallelujah 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 praise you lord jesus thank you lord jesus praise you thank you jesus praise you lord hallelujah 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 praise you jesus thank you lord worship you lord hallelujah hallelujah praise you jesus Lord you are the unseen but you are the evidence you are the certainty certainty that you will be with us you would never leave us alone Lord we look into our past and we realize today there is a lot of frustrations memories dark memories of frustrations when we were defeated by others we trusted and sad memories of failure we could not cope up we failed miserably we were sure but nothing was sure we realized later we counted on people lord but they let us down we counted our own on our own intelligence our own capacity we counted on the structures of the government we counted on economic systems and political parties lord everything went wrong today i stand before you having no idea about the future my finances my relationships my job nothing is sure for me but lord you are the surety to abraham you said go where abraham did not ask but i asked often i want to see the future 
to Abraham a God who said to the place to the land I will give you Abraham was promised a son too old to have a son Abraham did not say that he believed against all belief against all evidences against all certainties Abraham believed and his faith was counted for his righteousness for his blessedness to become the father of all believers but the Mary but the Mary believed she had a certain life a bliss ahead of her a man who loved her Joseph betrothed to her and now just leave it all leave it all I want your life for me but Lord today I leave it all into your hands in faith that my mother or the Mary shows me in faith and when she did it she was able to rejoice she was troubled but the trouble turned to joy but the Mary shows me it's not it's not the way my way my plan but your way your plan anoint me with the Holy Spirit the hands open in front of us with our hearts open to the Lord looking at the face of Jesus believing in his promise I will not leave you alone with mother Mary there's wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon us Into the heart of Mother Mary. She became blessed. She became a rejoicing handmaid of the Lord. However humble she felt she was. And she prophesied, generations will call me blessed. Lord, I don't want to waste my life doing my will, clinging on to my plans wanting my voice to be heard by everyone determined to be the center of the lives of others I want to give I want to open my hands and my heart I want to let go of my life Holy Spirit come Holy Spirit Fall afresh on me Fill me with your power Your power Satisfy my need You're my satisfaction You're my confidence for the future Only Holy you Spirit. can make me to make me grow come Holy Spirit 
fall afresh, fall afresh on, me. on me. Hallelujah. 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 Praise, Praise the Lord Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. Your blessing, O God. Your blessing that will make me blessed. Your presence is my strength and security. Lord, bless me. Bless me, Lord. We wait for your precious blessing to come upon us. of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3,000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged, the destitute women, the sick and abandoned and economically disadvantaged families. If you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of almsgiving, we invite you to send your love offering to Divine Charitable Trust CD account number 0402231010 14 HDFC Bank Chalakudi Branch IFSC Code HDFC 0000402 and email the details to Divine Retreat Center at gmail.com.